Welcome to part two of our introduction to Masech de Seirvin. In part one, we spoke about Eruv Echatzeris. We will now, Be'ez HaShem, discuss the Klaum of Eruv Echumen. The Sefer Chenech and Mitzvah Chavdal writes, Mishar She Mitzvah Zu, She Nisker V'neidah Sha'ila Mechudosh V'loi Kadman, K'me Shekos Be'ferish B'mitzvah Shabbos, Ki Sheishis Yomim Osa HaShem Es HaShemayim Es HaOretz, Es HaYom Es Kol HaShabon V'Yonach B'Yom HaShvi. We must always remember that the Rabbi Nishalom created the world, and being that Hashem rested on the seventh day, Therefore we make a zikaran by also resting and not taking long, strenuous walks, but rather only taking leisurely walks on Shabbos. The issue of walking beyond one's Tchum on Shabbos is based on the Pasig and Pashat B'Shalach. Ruki Hashem nosen lechem Shabbos, shavu ish tachtav. A person should remain in his place of residence on Shabbos, a yetzi ish b'mekoyme b'yim and not wander far away from his place on the seventh day. And the Gemara Daf Nun Alf darshins this pasuk as follows: Shibu ish tachtav elu arba amas, and from the words al yetzi ish b'mekoyme elu al payim amah. So what the pasuk is also telling us is that shibu ish tachtav, a person must stay within his dalad amas for the rest of the day if he walked outside of his mekoyme, outside of the two thousand amas tchum shabbos. And the Gemara arrives at 2,000 Amish through a series of Gezeris Shabbos, as the Gemara asks, Elo al-Payim Amah Menala. Amar Rav Chizda, Lamanu Mokoyim Mimokoyim, Umokoyim Menisa, Benisa Menisa, Benisa Megvul, Begvul Megvul, Begvul Mechutz, Bechutz Mechutz. Which brings us the final Pasig, Lechsev Umadaisa Mechutz Le'iris Pa'as Kedma, Al-Payim Ba'amah. There's actually a Machlekes among the Tanaim, whether the Isra of Tchumen is Medei Reis or only Medei Rabbana. Rekiva and Remeir hold that midday raisa tchumen al payim amo based on the above pasik, and Reb Lazar ben Neshav basically holds that tchumen al payim amo midraban. The pasik is nasmach me amo. The locha, as well as the accepted approach throughout Tama Bavli, is that tchumen is indeed only midraban. However, walking beyond twelve mil, which is twenty-four thousand amos, the size of Machni Yisrael, is according to the Yerushalmi asa midday raisa. And this is how the Rambam paskins, and based on this, the Chinuch counts Tchumen as one of the Targ mitzvahs. Mokim Shvisa A person's Tchum Shabbos extends up to 2,000 Amas in each direction from his Mokim Shvisa, his personal place of residence. A person has kind his Mokim Shvisa in the place he finds himself during Ben Hashmashis at the beginning of Shabbos. A person's Mokim Shvisa is basically Dalar Amas. However, if he is in a house, then his Dalar Amas extends throughout his house, and also throughout any enclosed or fenced in Rosh Hashayachid, which was Huk of Ladira. And if his house is in a town, then his Dalad Amas extends throughout his entire town as well. If he began Shabbos in an open area, then we begin measuring his 2,000 Amas Tchum from the edge of his Dalad Amas. If he began Shabbos in a solitary single house, we begin measuring his Tchum from the outside of the house. And if the house is within a town, then we begin measuring his Tchum at the edge of the town's borders. The 2,000 Amas Tchum extends on all four sides of his Mokim Shvisa. So in essence, a person can walk on Shabbos a total of 4,000 Amas, with his Mokim Shvisa being the center starting point. It is, however, possible for a person to transfer all or part of the 4,000 Amas towards one side of his Mokim Shvisa, which means that if he decides to transfer all 4,000 Amas to one side, he then may walk 4,000 Amas towards that one side, but may now walk even one Amma to the other side. And this can be accomplished with an Eruvei Tchum. There are two ways to set up an Eruvi Tchumen. One is Ir Baraglov, by actually going to the desired location and staying there during Bein Hashmashis until after Shabbos begins, thereby designating that location as his Makam Shvisa, his place of residence for that Shabbos. And the other way is Ir Bepas. An Eruvi Tchumen of Pas consists of Mazen Shtei Sudas, bread enough for two Shabbos meals for each person that is using the Eruv. By placing the package of food, the Eruvi Tchumen, at the 2000 Amma mark before Shabbos begins, He's going to Shvisa on that place, even though he will actually be 2,000 Amas away from there at the beginning of Shabbos. And that is because by placing the Eruv Tchumen there, he's declaring that his place of residence is really over there. And the rationale behind this is similar to what we learned by the Eruv Chatzeris. That a person's mind is focused on where his bread is. Also, the Eruv must be placed in a safe place so that the Muslim Shtei Sudas would be accessible to him on Shabbos. So it's important to realize is that the Eruv Tchumen does not and cannot change the actual amount the person may walk on Shabbos, because according to the Rambam, Tchumen is a deraisa, which no takans can change. What this Eruv does accomplish is that it changes the person's Mokim Shvisa 
that his residence is now transferred to where his meals are. However, the Chacham limited the use of a Nerubah to Chumim, as the Gemara says in Daf Pei Beis. Am Rav Yisim, E ma'arvin el ladvar mitzvah. We're not to make an Arab only for the purpose of a mitzvah, such as Leilich Labes Avel, or Labes HaMishta, Shal Nisuin, or Lekabu Pnei Rabbi. Complications with the Erev Tchumen arise primarily when trying to figure out from exactly where and how to measure the Tchum. If a person finds himself in an open field, then we begin measuring from the edge of his Daladamas. However, there is a Machlekes in the Mishnah, Daf Mem Hei, how to measure the Daladamas. The Tanakhama holds Daladamas Luchol Ruach. If he found himself in a single house or in a fenced-in area, then we measure the tchum from the edge of the house or fence. And if the house is within an ear, a town or a city, then we measure from the edge of the town. However, what constitutes a town and how to measure the edge of the town varies greatly. What constitutes a ear? In order for a group of houses to be considered an ear, it must contain at least six houses that are within 70 and one-half amma of each other. Measuring 2,000 ammas of the tchum would then be done from the last house of the group. If there was another group of six houses, in other words, another ear within 141 ammas, which is basically two times 70 and a half ammas, then we consider these two ayaras as one large ear, and we begin to measure the tchum from the last house of the second town. And the reason for this is because, as the Chacham say in the Mishnah Daf Nun Zayin, "Nois nin karfav ben shtei al yaris, imish lazuz shiv mam b'shiraim or lazuz shiv mam b'shiraim, or is it karfav eshteim lias echad?" Every town is given an additional area of seventy and a half amas called a karfav around the town that is considered as an extension of the town. When the two karfifas of the two nearby towns end within each other, then they combine those two cities into one. This formula can continue indefinitely as long as each neighboring ear is within 141 amas of the last one. And we only begin to measure the tchum from the last house of the last town. But this only works at the beginning, from where to start counting the 2,000 amas of the tchum. However, if a person's tchum ends in the middle of a town, even though the next house is within 70 amas of the tchum, it doesn't help. The end of the, his tchum is till where he may walk, even if his tchum ends in the middle of a house. Based on the above, we can understand the scenario in the Mishnah on Daf Samachal. Two friends, whose towns are 3,000 amas from each other. One would be permitted to visit the other, but not the other way around. For instance, Ruvain lives in a large town of 2,000 amas across, which is 3,000 amas away from the small town where his friend Shimon lives, which is only 1,000 amas across. They both make a rubit to Chumen and place them 2,000 amas away from the outer edge of their respective towns. Reuben would be allowed to visit Shimon, but Shimon would not be allowed to visit Reuben. And that is because Shimon's small town is completely within Reuben's Tchum. However, Shimon's Tchum ends in the middle of Reuben's large town. Therefore, Shimon cannot walk past the Tchum's end to visit Reuben's house, which is just a few blocks away. Whereas Reuben is permitted to walk throughout his large town because his large town is like his personal Dalai Lama's, However, this heter does not extend to Shimon, who came from the outside and whose tchum ends in the middle of the town. Ribuya ha'ir. Another critical factor in determining from where we begin to measure the tchum is the halacha of ribuya ha'ir, squaring off the borders of the city. This is the, derived from the pasuk describing the border of the Ori Halavim. Umadoisim achutz le'ir as pa'as kedma al pa'im ba'ama. From the word pa'as corner, the chum learned the concept of squaring off a city and applied that concept here to a ribuya tchum. What squaring off means is that if the outside borders of a city are an irregular shape or even round, then we draw an imaginary square around it that encompasses the entire city. What this also means is that the city now encompasses a much larger area since it includes all the corners which were originally not part of that city. The Gmarandav Nunvav teaches Tan Rabbanam, The square shape that we draw around the city cannot be just be drawn at any angle, but rather it must be squared off with the four sides of the world, as the Brisa goes on to explain. The imaginary square of the city must line with due north and due south. The Samanech, the Figuring out where the Ribu Ailam is can be done by reading the stars and constellations of the night sky. However, since most people are not so familiar with this system, Rabbi suggests using a more practical, popular method. To understand what Rabbi means, we need to understand the path the sun takes over the course of a year. 
Each year consists of 365 days plus 6 hours and is divided into 4 seasons, 4 Tukufas. Tukufas Nisan, Tukufas Tammuz, Tukufas Tishrei, and Tukufas Tevis. On the first day of Tukufas Nisan is known as the spring equinox, when day and night are equal, 12 hour day and 12 hour night. The sun rises on the east, travels across the sky during the day along the equator, the center of the earth, and then sets to the west. However, as the days go by, the sun's path across the earth begins to shift toward the north. Over the next 91 plus days, each sunrise and sunset will take place a few degrees closer to the north. At the end of the 91 days, the sun will rise at its closest point to the north. That day is the beginning of the next season, the next Kufa, Kufa's Tamas, the summer solstice, which gives us our warmest season and also our longest day. From the next day on, the sun reverses its path and begins to head south. The effect of that is that our days begin to get shorter and shorter until the sun once again crosses over the equator 91 days later at the beginning of Tukufus Tishri, known as the fall equinox, when once again we experience a perfect 12-hour day and 12-hour night. The sun then continues to slide towards the south with each passing sunrise and sunset. 91 days later, the sun rises at, at its closest point to the south. That day is the beginning of Tukufus Tavis, the winter solstice, which gives us our shortest day of the year. From that day on, the sun once again reverses its course and begins to slide towards the north. And now back to the Brisa. Ketzad chama yitzu b'yoyim aruch v'shakas b'yoyim aruch zehu p'nei tzafim. The sun, from our point of view, rises every morning on the eastern horizon and sets on the western horizon. But as explained, on the longest day of the year, at the beginning of Tukufus Tamas, it rises and then sets closest to the north, tzafim. And then as the Brisa continues to explain, chama yitzu b'yim katsu v'shakas b'yim katsu zehu p'nei dar. During the shortest days of the year, at the beginning of Tukufus Tavis, which is the winter season, the sun rises on the east, closest to the south, and then sets on the west, closest to the south, Dar. Rashi and the Gemara goes into great detail as to the exact movement and angle the sun takes over the course of the year, but for our purposes to understand how to square off the city borders, this is basically all we need to know how to determine due north and due south. For a more comprehensive understanding of the subject, please see our Birch HaSachama presentation on our Dafa Chaim website. So now, if we look at our illustration, we can clearly see how to match the Ribu Ha'ir with the Ribu Ha'ilam. And once we have the exact position of the Ribu Ha'ir, we measure 2,000 Amas from each side, and then once again square off the Tchum so that it too includes the corners. In today's times, all this is calculated by using a tax assessment map, which is used by Rabbanim, to figure out the Ribu Shal as well as the Tchum. Another advantage that the tax assessment maps have over the previous methods of measuring is that it avoids the complication in measuring across hills, mountains, water, and ditches. The Gemara in the fifth parak discusses various issues that may be encountered while measuring uneven terrain. Mishnah Daf Nun teaches the Mishnah is teaching that while measuring the Tchum, you encounter uneven terrain which would distort an accurate measurement. For instance, if you encounter a mountain, you do not measure it by going up and over the mountain, because that would distort the measurement of the Tchum. But rather, you need to measure the mountain as if you drilled a hole right through the mountain, which would then give you a straight, accurate measurement. How this was accomplished is discussed in great detail in the Gemara in the fifth parak. However, with today's advanced maps, which offer flat overhead aerial views of the mountains, it's much easier to measure a straight line to accurately determine the Tchum Shams. With this, we'll end our Hagdama presentation on Masat Tzayevin. We sincerely hope that this was helpful. Yashikoyev for listening, and Aslach Rabbah.